All right, perfect. Um, today, I think it's one of the most valuable topics that really uh, came out of the conversation I did with the community in the Twitter spaces last week uh, about really starting to shift the direction of the entire ecosystem uh, in a way where we're anticipating developer SDKs rolling out, projects to start launching tokens, applications on state channels. Um, how do you organize all of that? Uh, and this is primarily done through governance. Um, and what Matthias and Mike Butcher are gonna go through today uh, is, is really a framework for the Constellation ecosystem governance and educate everybody and inform people on kind of the approach we're taking uh, and really what our next step. So this is a pretty valuable session today. Uh, a lot of research over, I, you could say years, um, ha has come to fruition through this. And this is gonna be a ra rather exciting time for us. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna hand this over to Matthias. Thank you, Ben, much appreciated. And I'm equally excited. And for those of you um, who are wondering, Mike Butcher, who's uh, on this with me, he's having some camera issues. So apologies for that. But um, yeah, let me let me get right into it. And at the end, um, I'll try to be as succinct as possible. And uh, we may have a little bit of a Q&A at the end uh, to wrap that up. So let me share my, oh, uh, Andrea, you need to give me screen sharing rights. I got you. Um, still. I'm sorry about that. Okay. I think I lost. Let's see. All right. There we go. All right. There we go. Okay. Okay, do you see that? Yes, yep. It's I'll good. make that. Yeah, you see the slideshow. There we go. All right, so let's let's kick it off. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm very excited for this hypergraph hour. Uh, as Ben said, it's a uh, it's a very uh, deep topic. It's a broad topic, and it's it's based off of us being five and a half years in this industry. And it's overdue to really do a deep dive on governance to bring everyone in our community onto the same, onto the same page. Uh, what are the next steps for all of us as a community, as a decentralized ecosystem? And where are the ways of involvement for every single one of you if you choose so to be involved in, in this uh, part of effort? So we call this a flexible multi-stakeholder governance built for the future. Rather big uh, uh, terms here. Uh, it's a working title. But anyway, let's dive into this. And uh, why why are we caring about governance? You know, uh, you know, there was a lot of discussion in the community recently about governance. And I always like to say nobody wakes up in the morning thinking, of, oh, I got to fix governance, right? So why are we doing this? And, um, you know, there's some kind of like new snippets here of what has been uh, percolating recently in terms of Yuga Labs with their NFT offering. And uh, you know, you see that it also here in this highlighted section on the right, this also literally refers back to DAO governance and how they released and manage actually their, their foundation, how the NFTs have been released. Is there a, a motive behind it in terms of making money and all those kinds of things? There was another famous case around Okidao uh, where some people basically set up a, a leveraged uh, uh, derivatives trading uh, exchange um, on the Ethereum network. Well, and the whole thing about that was they tried to set up a DAO, a decentralized governance to, ex, uh, to evade regulatory scrutiny. And the regulators are uh, not being fooled that easily. They, you know, examined that very closely. 
And, uh, you know, so what people always thought is governance was a, a shield against regulatory scrutiny, not the case anymore, right? So there is a, a lot happening around governance. There's a lot that ties directly into, into legal aspects, especially for us also as a, as a US-based project. And, and, and there's, there's a lot happening in this space. So that's why it really, you know, behooves as well to take a very close look at how we structure our own efforts, but also go into how do other ecosystems that have run themselves very successfully so far uh, have structured their governance and, and how does that work out and, and what are we doing uh, leading out of that. So why does solid governance matter for us? Uh, in, in our opinion, governance is a key selling point, right? We, we are, like Ben said, ushering the next generation of our ecosystem. Uh, we have the flight program with over 70 uh, um, projects building. So one of the big things is we want to be attractive to developers. And any developer that's worth their five cents, they, they rely, working in crypto, they want to rely on a sound governance infrastructure. It needs to be solid, it needs to be proven, it needs to be reliable. So otherwise, we won't be able to attract that talent of that caliber to usher in that wave of people building on us, developing and supporting that entire growth of our um, of our ecosystem. So that's one big one. And, but also you uh, as token holders, if you're not a developer, you know, DAG as a utility token for uh, basically a gas token, but you know, you want to know what are the economics, what is the economic framework and that economic framework is usually uh, also run uh, or instituted by governance. So those are two major things that create uh, sustainability and reliability that makes uh, make us accountable as an ecosystem and give the guide rails of everything we do, right? And there was this discussion recently when Ethereum switched to proof of stake where Michael Saylor basically said, well, Ethereum after 10 years, they're just coming out of beta phase because they just shifted their entire you know, framework of how they, their economic uh, incentive system works. And there are some valid points to that. So, so governance is really one of those underlying guardrails that, that really form and can make or break an entire uh, crypto ecosystem. And then last but not least, regulators, of course, as well. They are looking very closely at decentralized processes and development activities. Um, they have a, a good nose and uh, the fitting software as well to suss out if you know, you're just uh, running something as a, as a scam that just poses as decentralized self-governance or if there's actually a real infrastructure with the real governing effort behind it. So those are all really valid and very important uh, uh, pieces that we as, as Constellation and as Constellation ecosystem uh, want and need to address. So this is crucial, absolutely crucial for our growth, for our sustainability, for and for our longevity of our entire ecosystem. And the way we view this, this is an, a, a market factor, right? This draws people, this draws capital. Uh, if we haven't nailed that in a, in a consistent way, uh, that's, that's something where people go look at it and it's like, eh. I don't trust this. This is not quite right. This is not quite fleshed out yet. And we think it's more than time to really flesh that out. And uh, this, this is why we're engaging on this. All right. Um, what is the goal for us? You know, it's nice to have these uh, 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 lofty goals and, and be buttoned up. I mean, that's that's basically the homework that has to be done. But ultimately, we want to go all of us together, we want to go uh, coin market cap top 10, right? That's that's the goal. And to visualize this, this is how it could look like. But that's really where we want to go. It's it's one, one thing to say it, but if you actually see it, well, that's the journey we all want to embark on. And that's the value alignment. That's the alignment we, we want to have with you as a community. And that's why we're creating uh, sound processes and and you know, firming everything up that leads us and enables us to go that road the, uh, towards towards the top 10 ecosystem. And along those ways, yeah, I mean, we need to grow, right? Growth is the the single most metric we're, we're all looking towards. That means growth in talent, growth in capital, growth in token holders, code contributions, people building on us as ecosystem projects. All these things are inherently important and those are success metrics that anybody can and will look onto once, we, uh, once we're in that growth mode uh, to evaluate uh, who we are and, and what we're contributing in the crypto uh, industry. 
So super important. All right, so I wanna give a, a little bit of an overview of where governance actually as a, as a topic really is, is um, to be put into a context. And when we're talking about governance, we're really talking about not just, oh yeah, how do we govern ourselves as a small group, as some crypto entrepreneurs, but governance basically means from a very human perspective, it's, it's the, the guide rails, the behavioral patterns of how we as humans actually collaborate and work together. And that has, you know, an age old history since, since the Neolithic age, basically. And if you're a group of hunters just going for some deer, the level of coordination and, and cohesion and how you govern your group is probably a, a little less complex than in an advanced society where, you know, you want to build pyramids and palaces and trade networks and all that kind of stuff. And people, people have thought about these problems of how to collaborate the entire history of mankind. That's really what we're doing here. If we're talking governance, we're talking about a, the history of humankind of how we wanna, wanna roll with each other, how we, we wanna do stuff. And it's, it's, it's really easy if you're the big guy having holding the, the crown basically, you know, and you just behead everybody who's not behaving. That's, that's an easy narrative to get, to get behind and you can be very efficient and effective building pyramids and, and all kinds of stuff. But, but then the question is, you know, how how do you create something that really lasts, something that's resilient, something that's adequate and flexible enough as as a system? How you 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 govern things? And yeah, I mean, ancient civilizations have been around for a couple of thousand of years, but you know, the successions of the kings they were usually always kind of like uh, killed, and you know, the next big guy came on, and that's not a very sustainable model um, um, if, if, if you want to govern something you know effectively over the long run. So now as technology evolves, we're not hunting deer, we're not building pyramids anymore. So where does governance today apply? And obviously, yeah, we all live in some country or another. That's a big effort, but, but the, the forefront of everything really is decentralized uh, IT architecture. And uh, blockchain is not the first uh, infrastructure that has tried to govern decentralized and there is predecessors and notably what I, what I'm talking through today the internet you know a global network of nodes of servers and fiber cables that span the entire globe and you know there's multiple I mean literally you know dozens and hundreds of countries that are connected to the internet and they all have a stake and, and, a, and a vested interest in being part of the internet because we all know the economic activities, the upside and so on and so on. Um, but then the question is, there's always these forces, the tug of war basically where private entities, they wanna you know, privatize or monetize just in these closed boxes. And that's you know, uh, conflicts then again with nation state interests and you know, Russia, US and Russia and Europe, for example, you know, where, where they try to slice up and limit access to a global network. And, and, and especially in, in tension times like today, I mean, that becomes very, very obvious. And, and there is a governing body and, and institutions uh, out there that have laid frameworks and have recommendations on how to govern the internet. And the IEEE is one, one of these institutions and, and they host roundtables and they promote you know, open access, uh, uh, net neutrality and all those principles that you, you hear in the news, but you know, from a societal perspective, these are all fundamental access rights to be part, part of, of a global network. And, and, and this is in, in a tension field with, with you know, other monetary nation state interests. And so, so power needs to be balanced, right? And how do you keep that infrastructure you know, uh, usable so that it doesn't doesn't uh, uh, you know fracture into many different kingdoms and and toll roads like in the Middle Ages in Europe. You know, where you have all these little kingdoms and states, and every every five five hundred feet you got to pay somebody to to go to go to the next town basically. And 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 how do we keep that spirit of open source and interconnection alive? So that's where Bitcoin really has drawn a lot of those. Uh, principles of how to do that. How do you 
improve the protocol? How do you do code contributions uh, on such an infrastructure? And they've taken some of those uh, working principles from the IEE and others and have forged them into uh, what they call the BIP, the Bitcoin Improvement uh, Proposal Process, and Ethereum uh, coming, coming uh, on with that as well, the EIP, the Ethereum Improvement uh, Proposal Process. And that's the history uh, in which we have to to view ourselves if we want to talk about governance and where does Constellation fit into all of this. And, and that's really important because uh, Bitcoin, the IEE, Bitcoin, and Ethereum have done an amazing job to govern themselves. Yeah, there are criticisms uh, for, for any model, right? But, but essentially, they are, they, they are very stable models and they have achieved tremendous success as, as projects, as code infrastructures. So, so that's 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 uh, what I wanted to exemplify. And then, if we dr drill down deeper into the crypto cryptoverse, of what other forms of governance do apply when we look at constellation and ecosystem governance? And that is uh, the next slide. And uh, some of you probably, uh, you know, we had a lot of discussions recently, and and Ben had his his talk last week on the Twitter Spaces. And my impression was that there is some conflation going on, at least in parts of the community, between what does governance actually mean. And there's two distinct types of governance. One is application layer governance. Uh, which is usually centered around the DAO. And it has a clear application like Uniswap, Lattice Exchange, Curve, um, MakerDAO, or, or Olympus DAO, just to name a couple of examples. But pr pretty much everything that we've seen in the last two years on DeFi, uh, most of those projects are centered around the DAO. And a DAO means basically a, a governance structure that, that usually has some control over some sort of treasury or some sort of API metrics uh, in terms of emission schemas, like for example, on Curve or on Uniswap, what do people earn? Which partnerships or, or treasury swaps are we, are we you know, onboarding onto our platform and protocol? Say Olympus DAO, that's a, that's a topic there. Um, so they are really focused on the applicability and they are determining and governing on the metrics of how to make that business more efficient and work better, right? So it's, it's business-based in a way. Uh, they are usually less code-based because an application layer project uh, for, for the most part, and of course there are exceptions, but is less code heavy um, than, than an entire infrastructure like it's the case for Ethereum, Bitcoin, or even Constellation. So, so clear use case and many, many of those DAOs have coin voting uh, mechanisms. Coin voting meaning uh, stakes of the tokens you hold, uh, governance tokens being a big topic in the last two years as well. Uh, so whatever stake you hold that, uh, you know, you can contribute on that governance side of things. Very important, application layer DAOs or governance systems never make infrastructure decisions. Like uh, Olympus DAO does not decide on code proposals on Ethereum. <laughs> That's, they can, if they submit an EIP on Ethereum, they can do that, but then it's just an EIP. They as an entity have no say, so to speak, on the Ethereum governance process. They run their own governance process centered around their own use case. And there's a couple of ideas out there, you know, on Uniswap where the scope of that governance is pretty limited where very clear metrics of uh, governance decisions are only even opened uh, to, a, to, a, to a DAO uh, governance approach. So even ideas shortly want to mention that on DGov, which is something that Vitalik has discussed uh, uh, on his blog and other people have proposed that where basically you come out with the governance and over time you basically scale out governance and have no governance after a certain period. Of course, these are ideas, right? Nobody's really doing that right now, but it's interesting to see uh, what is happening on that side. So if you're using an application layer governance, there are ready-made platforms on pretty much any ecosystem out there where you literally can just plug in your application and you stand up a governance. One is Aragon on ETH or Squats on Solana, uh, to name two. Um, you don't need to reinvent the wheel if, if you want to run governance for a project. Same, we didn't need to reinvent the wheel for Lattice or, or you know, Uniswap doesn't need to reinvent the wheel. These, there's toolboxes and processes available that, that anyone can use who, who's working on an infrastructure layer application project. 
So what that means for us is Constellation doesn't have such a tool platform for DAO governance yet, which could be a very interesting uh, productization opportunity for anyone out there who has the uh, the chops and, and the time and the will to actually productize something on HTTP. Just want to put that out there, uh, wink, wink, so to speak. Um, opportunity, right? Like we're a network of opportunities. Uh, so that's one of them. So uh, at last, uh, the last point on that is uh, within the DAO structures, uh, there is a, a, a subtype or a, a type I call uh, infrastructure community DAOs. And those are basically DAOs that are centered uh, around the community of an infrastructure ecosystem. So that means home base on Tezos is basically a DAO that, uh, that that supports the Tezos ecosystem or IOHK on Cardano might be a fringe case here, but they are developing and supporting the Cardano ecosystem, right? So there's DAO and then there's the network. So there's, there's two ways of how a DAO layer governance basically could interact. One is purely application, one is in support of its infrastructure uh, uh, that they are built on, but they're not the infrastructure. That's the important point. Now switching over to the other side, uh, infrastructure layer governances are not DAOs. That's very important to note. Like no infrastructure that I know at least, uh, certainly none of the very successful ones are run as a DAO. That code governance and that governance is, is just not structured like that. The, they do not uh, hold any funds. They, their, their goal is to implement uh, EIPs, BIPs, and in our case, hypergraph improvement proposals, which I'll talk in a minute about, but is to further code governance, to further processes around uh, the economic model or around best practices, how you know certain things are being run on the infrastructure itself. It's meant to implement uh, changes on the code base itself, on, on the very core of what makes that infrastructure tick. So it's a very different scope of what is being governed. And in existing ecosystems, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, those are heavily uh, governed uh, and run by off-chain components, which is very interesting to note. If you're really diving into BTC and ETH governance, how those things work, none of them are on-chain, which is quite interesting versus contrasting to Tezos, who's opted for a full on-chain process. There's big philosophical discussions going on because delegated proof of stake and, and you know, off-chain governance. Vitalik, for example, opposes on-chain governance vehemently uh, with very good reasoning, um, uh, in my opinion. Um, so we see coin voting is much less common on, on infrastructure level network governance systems. And yeah, it, 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 it really, it, it governs code, it, the economic framework and the best practices. So that's, that's the point. So very distinct uh, systems of governance in the crypto sphere. And just outlining that uh, in, in this way, it, it really becomes clearer for, for everyone in the community is, okay, where, where do I want to place myself? Where, where could I be at home in, in this offering that, that, that we're basically presenting, right? So, but we'll we'll go deeper into that a little later. So now I just want to briefly go over what Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then what we're gonna do. Um, because again, Bitcoin and Ethereum are the most successful crypto ecosystems ever in the industry, um, in this short history, and they have done a lot. Right. Bitcoin has a, a much more stable governance in the sense of that they are kind of averse to innovation. That's why they have kind of missed the DeFi train versus Ethereum. They are much more flexible in how they allow ideas into their governance system, which is more agile, which has spearheaded the vast innovation we've seen in the crypto industry with, you know, uh, the ERC token, ERC20 token standard, for example, Ethereum. Uh, uh, very successful, uh, hugely. Uh, same with uh, the NFT standards that, that Ethereum have, has promoted that literally sparked entire new industries. So that shows you uh, the way how governance is being run and constructed has a direct impact on the marketability and the innovation that is brought into an ecosystem. And, and that's always in alignment with the people 
who govern and the people who are in that ecosystem, right? I mean, Bitcoin, you have to probably have a master's or PhD in computer science and have like major street credibility uh, as a developer to even be able to propose something in, into their ecosystem. Otherwise, there's just no chance. Ethereum is a little more flexible where even people who you know, only recently joined the ecosystem are able to leverage ideas. But that doesn't distract from the fact that both of them are in a way highly regulated in the sense of that proposals on those ecosystems are not ideas. They are fully fledged design documents uh, that have a reference implementation on the code side already coming with them. So if you propose on Ethereum an EIP uh, proposal, you have to have a full reference implementation already ready before anybody even starts talking to you, so to speak, right? And that's the bar. That's the bar we want to set with, with our hypergraph improvement proposals as well. We don't want to have a pool of people who just chips in ideas to, because whatever, you know, because it seems important or, or something like we are, we want to make sure that we have a group of builders or a group of entrepreneurs, a group of people with, with a longevity in their mindset who actually contribute core code base to our infrastructure protocol, right? So the threshold of proposing something on an infrastructure level for the infrastructure code base or process base for the matter is very high. And, and, and Ethereum and Bitcoin ensure that quality standard through what they call shepherds or sponsors. So they are the people who, who are the, the guardians who thwart off governance spam, who uh, you know, nix duplicate ideas or proposals. You need to approach them as, as somebody who has an idea or BIP, EIP idea. You approach those people, they are known in their communities and, and they need to basically support your idea. They need to sign off of it before it even gets assigned an official process number in those governance ecosystems. So until it has a number, it's just an idea, right? But once it has an idea, it has to have reference implementation, fully fledged, full ideas. This is not ideation anymore. This is like talking about implementation of something that exists already fully fledged. So yeah, then they, they discuss it in their communities. In Bitcoin, it's the Bitcoin core. It's an email list. And on Ethereum, it's the Ethereum magicians board and, and several other channels they have. Um, and, and that's how they basically gain off-chain in uh, sentiment checks on, on their ideas. And there's just kind of like a ballpark, like a rough, you know, rough community uh, uh, positive sentiment towards an HIP or EIP until that gets rolled forward. Um, and of course, the, you know, the, the coder community, they have, you know, they check those proposals very thoroughly and it's going back and forth if, if that's going to be implemented or not. So just uh, I've added two, two uh, process charts. It's pretty simple draft, accepted, final, kind of like, you know, steps of, of that process. Um, but what is really important is, is, you know, those sponsors and shepherds because they are the key stakeholders in making sure quality and ethical alignment with anything that comes into, into that I, uh, HIP, EIP, BIP pool is up to snuff, right? So very, very important. Um, yeah, so the next one on Ethereum, the way they track this, Ethereum improvement proposals, they have a website. You can look all those proposals up. We envision something very similar for us uh, as well. Um, yeah, uh, that's a summary. We don't need to go we deeply into that, but basically it means if we if we're looking into into governance efforts and and all the efforts that that have been going on in the real world with nation states, but also in crypto, governance is very easy to get wrong and and very hard to get right. And there will never be a solution that is perfect. So, so all of you who are listening to that, who are thinking around that governance can never be perfect, never. And it just, if you try to do that, it leads into an iterative process of a problem, creating a new problem. You're trying to solve that problem and then you're developing something to solve that. And it becomes a self-reflexive loop of basically trying to fix something. So you got to cut it at some point and you got to make decisions in order to be operable. So it's always a trade-off between efficiency security and what has to be done right and and that's a that's a a soft thing that is not something anybody can tell us that's something we need to feel out and need to practice 
uh, when we set up our own governance system. So um, that means the governance we want to set up, um, just to recap, we, we did have predecessor efforts around governance. I set up uh, the first working group in 2019. Uh, that group, uh, I call it Governance V1, disbanded or, or kind of like, yeah, they, they disbanded. It was replaced with a community driven, what we called a Stardust Collective, uh, which was more on the DAO side, to be honest, uh, approach. And um, yeah, so basically what, what we're lacking is a, is a true code governance on our network infrastructure. And that's why I really made a point to distinguish between DAO governance and network infrastructure DAO, uh, governance, because those are two very different efforts. Um, and it means, yeah, we need to do our homework and, and get that network governance, the code governance into, into place. And, you know, there's a lot of ideas out there, but we're in execution mode. So what I'm going to present is a rough uh, um, process uh, that we have come up with uh, that is in line with other crypto ecosystems to make it as easy as possible for members of other communities to come into our ecosystem to go like, okay, this is, I know this from Bitcoin. I know this from Ethereum. This is easy. It's just another glove. Okay, I know how this goes. Tell me where my sponsors are. I know how to roll this, right? So our approach is to keep it as simple as possible, to as effective as possible, uh, uh, and, and not iterate on, on like, okay, what is the pro score? I mean, these are things we want to explore, but we need to be actionable as fast as possible in order to, to govern ourselves effectively. So we want to explore pro, pro scoring. We want to explore all these, you know, coin voting mechanisms, uh, security, uh, not security tokens, but L0 tokens. Uh, we have some ideas around what I call GDAG, the governance DAG, where, where there's some very interesting scenarios we can roll in specifically with our consensus algorithm. I think there's, there's really, really interesting solutions we can come up with, but not as a first step. We need to harden. Uh, we need to harden our model first, right? We need to harden the relationships between people. We need to have shepherds that people can relate to uh, to propose their ideas. We need to have those quality checks and processes in place before we even lift that on chain and have you know all kinds of scoring models and 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 governance tokens and all those kinds of things. We want to we wanna be efficient, learn uh, and experiment with the process, iterate and adapt. And once we have hardened the model, then I think it's a, it's a very easy or much easier task to, to lift things on chain, but not just go right out of the gate uh, on chain. Uh, you know, additionally to that, you know, we have an engineering roadmap, so we're not quite feature complete yet. It, it, it'll be there next, mid next year. Um, but so, so in stride with that, what I called in some earlier documents, emergent governance, but this is the first uh, uh, real approach to, to have a, a governance that's on par with a Bitcoin, that's on par with an Ethereum. And the process I'm going to propose is the HIP process. Uh, we want to be you know, in line with those other ecosystems. We don't want to be too fancy, too heady, too way out there. Uh, we know, we see what works and we need to take what works and bow and nod to those things that work and not try to reinvent the wheel when there's already solutions out there. So that's my proposal for you today, looking at, at our DAG uh, um, HTTP governance. So first, the most important places, uh, and these are examples uh, from Ethereum, uh, where do you govern? <laughs> where does it, is that going to happen? And on Ethereum, a lot of the discussions happens on what they call fellowship of the Ethereum magicians. And you see here EIP numbers. Once they have numbers assigned, that's a thread where the entire discussion pro and con and, and so on and so on is being threaded. It's the repository. You could almost say the GitHub of, of governance proposals where everybody can see what's the pros, what's the cons, and you know so on and so on. That's the 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 community platform, basically. And we want to mirror that. Uh, we have bought the domain hypercore.org. Uh, ICANN is dragging their feet a little, so we'll only be able to put a coming soon page or something on there in 1st of December uh, because of transfer rules that are applicable to that specific domain. But we're going to mirror, basically, fellowship of the Ethereum magicians with hypercore. And it's going to be the tracking and threading forum for governance discussions. 
Additionally to that, uh, we're going to set up a Discord, a Hypercore Discord, where, you know, obviously speed and efficiency is a little different on a chat, but the, the, the website Hypercore will be to thread. So any sponsor uh, task is basically to take those pro and cons arguments for an AHIP and basically thread them onto that board and, and keep track of that process. So the sponsor role, and we'll come to that, is, is a very important role in, in any of these processes. But what we're going to do is, in addition to that, at the end of our process, we're just not going to have a rough pro and contra kind of like tracking. We want to use DAG as, a, as our utility token, uh, also as a first approach to coin voting. So at the end of that process, uh, we, we, we're we going to set up a, a, a vote on Lattice. Uh, there's going to be a, a, an additional subsection on Lattice for constellation governance proposals, and people who hold DAG uh, can basically, uh, uh, you know, vote vote on these proposals. So those are the three tools uh, that that are going to be productized, um, where you and we all as a community keep track of all these things, and of course, past proposals and and all those things uh, will be coalescing on on those three um, venues. Um, yeah, going further. So just a brief uh, process uh, flowchart. Obviously, you know, an HIP hypergraph improvement proposal um, starts with a draft. Uh, it's being endorsed by, by a sponsor, is being reviewed by the community, and it's being pushed into the voting phase. Uh, if it's accepted, yeah, status is final, and it gets implemented on a, on a core code basis by, by the core engineering team. Um, how that looks as a, as a more process flow model. Um, again, the, the stages idea draft are on top. Uh, starts with an idea. Uh, if I or you have an idea, right? Uh, you, you go into the community and you, you ask around is okay, has that idea been leveraged before? Is that something that's even interesting to the community? And, and that gives a, a first felt sense of, okay, what, what's going on here? Is that even something that's needed? For example, if somebody comes up with, with a very needed aspect, okay, I've developed uh, you know, a code snippet uh, for multi-sig uh, on, on our network. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know? so, so that would be easy to find a, a sponsor uh, if, if you've already developed uh, uh, that, or you know, the sponsor would basically co-write or co-author with you the specs, the design document of how to do um, a multi-sig integration on the hypergraph network. Is that going to be implemented in the core code or is that a community code snippet? You know, that's uh, an ERC track basically analogous to that. But anyway, let's assume it's, it's, um, it's a core code addition. The sponsor helps you formally write out that proposal, integrate that uh, reference implementation. Uh, once that is done, a number is assigned, and then it can be represented onto Hypercore again and the Discord, and people can chime in and it's like, hey, you could be more efficient on that line of code or, or things like that, you know, and then people can go back and readjust their HIP proposal. And once they think uh, based on the feedback, it's good enough, then the author and the sponsor push that as a global community vote where people can vote uh, with their DAG to implement uh, that idea or not idea, that proposal or not. And so there, are, you know, that comes to a point is there are different types of proposals uh, in Ethereum, in Bitcoin, but also on Hypergraph. One is basically what they call standard. That's pretty much anything around code. Then there's a, a process uh, proposal, which means it can be, how do we govern ourselves? Uh, how does the economic framework work? Um, how how do, all aspects that are not necessarily code but are directly relevant to the infra the infrastructure itself. Um, that's a process proposal. Uh, and then there's a, a third one that they call information, uh, which is basically kind of like a best practice. How do we you know uh, uh, how do we do this? What is the standard? for that and, and kind of like a, almost like an FEQ kind of like best practice type of like scenario and just to codify what are those things in our ecosystem? How do we speak about X? How do we uh, cite? How do we, you know, all those kinds of things. Those are run through uh, uh, information type proposals. So there's these three ty proposal types that exist and that we also gonna over, uh, um, implement on our HIP process. 
So uh, we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. So that means on the core uh, network governance side, the most important, the key and angle point of what matters for all of us is the role of the sponsor, right? The sponsor is the person who, who, who manages the process, who is the first point of contact for anyone in the community wanting to express an idea and transform it into an HIP. They need to make sure that you know it's it's fully fleshed out, that it's written in the proper format, and of course we're going to publish all these formatting rules HIP one analogous to EIP one. We're going to outline all these things. It's not you know off the cuff, but that's a highly responsible role, and we envision at this point to have sponsors nominated by all major stakeholder groups in our ecosystem. Obviously, core engineering absolute must l0 projects alchemy for example has spearheaded a lot of uh, infrastructure uh, development on their l0 channels like somebody a project like that for example uh, should have uh, the possibility to to nominate a sponsor and i'm just giving that as an example right now um so the the ecosystem projects who built on the infrastructure should be able to nominate sponsors. The same for the node operator group, right? They are not necessarily the same group, you can appoint uh, two sponsors, the same Constellation Foundation as one of the major contributors uh, to this ecosystem as well, it needs to have a voice, obviously. And the same for the community at large, who's not necessarily a builder or a node operator. Um, and that's what I summarized under community DAO um, and, and, and we will go a little deeper in, into that uh, in a minute as well. But we envision every stakeholder group, every major stakeholder group can appoint a sponsor. And, and again, the sponsor role, what, what we'd be looking for is people with technical chops. Like this is not an idea role. This is a, a process-based role. And to be honest, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a role that that is uh, that has a lot of responsibility and and most people should not want that role <laughs> let's put it that way it's kind of like these leadership conundrums if if people want the role too fast then it's usually the wrong people wanting the role versus people who are good leaders usually know what a role really entails and they are very cautious <laughs> you know say yes to a role it's kind of like one of these these uh you know parad paradoxes uh, uh, around leadership and roles but but i just want to make sure that you know people and you and we as a community really understand what the gravity of a sponsor role is it's not a vanity thing it requires deep work and it requires deep knowledge uh, on governance processes and how to formulate them actually in in markup language all those kinds of things uh, they need to be able to code as well to review stuff and ideas so so this the, the bar to entry to be a sponsor is pretty high and that's by design because we want to be a, a, an ecosystem that has solid code contributions and and people who really understand the longevity of what we're trying to do again you know if you if you're governing a global infrastructure uh, you know it doesn't serve well uh to to have people as a sponsor who have short-term interest in their mind like we're thinking five ten twenty years you know bitcoin ethereum they've been around for 10 years if you have people who'd only be interested in promoting like a little sliver of of the next quarter of of their their earnings you know those infrastructures would not be around anymore so that's the level of expertise uh, that that we are seeking for and that we require in order for this governance process to work on a code infrastructure basis so builders and coders to the forefront uh we'd be very happy to talk to you and um yeah with that we're forming a, a working group while I have presented a, a, a rough process, there is still things we need to figure out and we want feedback from the community, but we also specifically for the network governance, we want feedback from qualified people who have already experience in other ecosystems around governance, who have code experience. Th those are the kinds of people uh, we, we, we are looking for and we wanna collaborate with to really take our governance to the next level and make us equal in the market with everyone else out there. So not a small ask, I know. So that comes to to the to your involvement. Where can you get involved? And I know, you know, many, I'm not a coder either. 
So, so where, where do people and we all place ourselves in, in, in this huge uh, amount of uh, carpet of opportunities, basically? And that's why I lined out Community DAO, right? That is something uh, a lot of you can get involved in, uh, you, you know, update, refurbish, or create uh, a new Community DAO structure. What we need as Constellation, we need a counterparty in our ecosystem that has a legal structure of sorts uh, that we can distribute our Stardust taxes to, that is legally entitled to receive those funds, who has the governance mechanisms in place to be able to thoroughly and, and cohesively manage those funds and towards the goal of furthering our ecosystem to maybe fund developers with a grant program, put up liquidity incentives, uh, you know, have code contributions. Stargazer is a very good example around Frank Fox and his group, massive effort that has, you know, contributed majorly to our ecosystem already. So we would love to see more of that. We don't want to tell you what to do. So there's a fine line between us telling you what to do and what the ecosystem needs, right? We, we see that, of course, where there's areas where there's a lot of need. And those areas I have outlined there, multi-sig, a big need. So if you, as a community, stand up a community DAO structure, multi-sig is a prerequisite, right? So we need to have multi-sig. Uh, is that something that core is focused on right now? No, they have other items to deliver, right? So that would be an ideal thing where a community DAO could contribute already on the code base, similar to Stargazer or, or scoring efforts. Uh, you, you all know, know these things as well, but there's a lot that can be done uh, on the community side. There's the Stardust Collective group, uh, but there could be a new DAO, another structure, competing structure, or you update uh, everything that has happened on 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 the on the on, on the Stardust Collective side. That's up to you. We we don't want to tell you what to do. Um, at the same time, there the ecosystem has needs, right? So there there's a there, there's a, 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 a kind of like a a ping, a sonar ping, so to speak. Um, but anyway, that's my my ask for you, all of you out there, right? Uh, get involved in the community DAO, build and contribute. And the, the minute you guys have come up with something uh, through your self-organization with your governance structure on that DAO that we can work with as consolation, uh, we have no problem you know, uh, pushing over those funds and and you you run those campaigns. And of course, you know, one of the other requirements is that that governance that you stand up needs to be kind of like rage quit proof. We've seen that a couple of times. It's one of the things in, in crypto ecosystems. People, you know, build relationships for two years and then and then all of a sudden they they have a something happening in their life and, and all of a sudden, you know, two years of effort just go down the drain. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, there's a lot of people with short-term interest, which is totally fine, but a DAO structure needs to be able to withstand those types of scenarios because we're talking about funds and we're talking about the legality of transmitting those funds to you. So, you know, need to be exit scam proof, need to be rage quit proof, need to be properly governed and established. And that's your task. That's a big task. And, and with all those efforts going, going around in, in the entire industry, there's a lot you can innovate and spearhead on. So I can only encourage everyone to really get together, self-organize and, and, and approach us once you have something and, and, and we can start that you know, uh, process of really growing together. The second one is the network governance. And that's what I described in process uh, uh, in the last part of my presentation. We're going to institute a working group. So I, again, we're calling out to anybody with significant experience in other ecosystems to, to approach us. We, we want to work with you on that. We need feedback. We need to work on some of those metrics. Uh, we want to work with you as a community to appoint those sponsors from, from those different stakeholder groups to make sure that you know the, the, the quality and level of engagement each, each group represents the the right amount of engagement, right? Uh, but that's a process we all uh, uh, need to figure out with each other. There is no hard metrics at this point. And of course, we need to educate our entire ecosystem about those two opportunities for everybody, network governance and community DAO governance, right? These are very different things. And um, yeah, anyway, big education needed and product built. We want to have HyperCore up and uh, uh, the Lattice 
uh, governance vote opportunity with DAG tokens. Uh, we want to have that up by January 2023. That's the target right now. We try to be faster, but we have, you know, uh, our resource limitations as well. So that's what we are um, we are intending to do. So collaborative. Um, and last but not least, um, there is one more thing. So we have two roles uh, opening in our. Uh, they will be published very soon, uh, I think, on the website and through all these other channels, governance coordinator and governance evangelist. So we're really looking for people uh, to, to spearhead, at least on the, as sponsors and on the foundation side, to be sponsors in, in those governance processes. And again, we will publish those requirements, but we need deep crypto people. And we want you to um, you know, approach us if you have that knowledge. We'd be more than excited. Uh, to have those conversations with you as well. So there's roles open. Uh, there will be more coming. Uh, there's a whole whole slew of positions uh, uh, we haven't really uh, uh, widely announced. Uh, they were always there, but uh, we're, we're going to make an effort to really show you guys uh, the, the growth and expansion we're intending to do. So with that, uh, I'm closing and we're going to have a little FAQ. I have posted Mike's uh, and, and my contact details here. Uh, reach out to us and, uh, and, and we'll coordinate. There will also be a Twitter spaces that Mike is spearheading. So I'll take the co-pilot role. He has significant knowledge in, in DAO governance uh, uh, as well. And so, um, yeah, Andrea, if, if you don't mind, uh, let's, and we have some time, maybe a little bit of FAQ. I don't know if I went over here, um, how you want to do it. Sorry about that. Um, we actually don't have any questions, just you have some compliments. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't announce a Q&A after. Also, I think, um, the presentation had so much information that people might need to um, you know, kind of digest it. Jeez, I went longer than expected. Yeah, I know it's, it's, it's intense. Yeah, everyone. Oh, wait a minute. We have one mm -hmm. question and you are getting a lot of compliments. So yeah, it was a great presentation. Um, well, we've got how much DAG is available for the community DAO from the tax, so. Ooh, I don't know the exact number right now, but it's it's in the million. I mean, it's in the millions USD value. Yeah, and there. I think it's people. probably. I think it's it's somewhere around three million bucks right now at current value, something like that. Don't don't nail me on that. <laughs> yeah, we had a couple of questions in courtyard about gdag and if it would be a one-to-one -one relationship with dag yeah forget forget gdag at this point i know i made a, a, a cursory announcement on not announcement but kind of like a comment on twitter two weeks ago uh we have of course ideas around how an on-chain process could look like and how gdag as a governance token would fit into that uh, we need to spec that in terms of build out because it requires a state channel. It requires us technologically to be a little uh, further along. And again, we want to harden our processes first. We can't just launch a process and nobody talks to each other. Like that doesn't work. So we need to have the human, the human process in place. This is why the sponsors are so important and why, you know, that entire thing that I presented is, is really, really, um, you know, we, we have to have that and then we can take that on chain so forget that for now but but with the work group once we have that preliminary process in place yeah we can explore that together uh we can feedback that you know once once the initial governance stands well then that's within the governance process to lift that then on chain right so that would be a proposal that would go through hip that would be vetted against the entire community now we're working within the go a full governance process right so that's the intention yeah. um and then we've got someone who's interested in in, in you know, taking part in this and participating and he wants to know like what's the next step how does he reach out does he just well, i have the contact details uh i mean mike and i we are on twitter uh, uh mike at constellation network.io matthias at constellation network.io i mean we're all present on on those mediums so just reach out to us and 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 we'll take it from there okay 
Sounds good. And then they want to know if we can share the slide deck. Yeah, there. heck yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So PDF format or whatever, we can get it up and share it. I can um, send it out on socials maybe. Cool. Let's do that. Okay. I don't think we have anything else. Nothing else so far. But we are a little bit after three. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to bore or exhaust people either. Well, let's. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Well, I'm glad that you all showed up. I know we're in the middle of a bear market that always uh, draws on on the emotions. Uh, hold on, soldiers. It's another year. <laughs> Good time to build. This is the best time to build because uh, the waters are smooth and uh, people are actually focused on building versus in a bull market where everybody you know, doesn't have the time of the day. So great time for us to build. Uh, don't despair, it's gonna be good. And uh, yeah, I mean, Mike, do you wanna announce uh, uh, the, the Twitter spaces and, and, and you know, the next, some next steps? Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to jump on some Twitter spaces after the fact and go more and more in depth once people kind of digest the content um, and go from there. I'm just looking forward to seeing uh, who all wants to be involved and going through that process. I think it's going to be pretty exciting. Um, great presentation, though. That was absolutely amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Cool. Ben, you want to want to drive us home or are we good? Yes, killed it, killed it, Matthias. So really amazing uh, way to lay the groundwork. Looking forward to the Twitter spaces, but uh, yeah, let's get involved. That's all I got to say. We covered it all. Awesome. All right, guys. Later, guys. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye. Thank you.